In this video, you will learn how to read data from a Postgres database in Next.js using both client and server components. In our example today, we will build a product page component for our e-commerce application. The component will load the data from a Postgres database hosted in Verso and then display that information for the user. So after this video, you will know how to read data from Postgres database in your Next.js applications. Without further ado, let's get started. So over here, I have a fresh Next.js project open. And only thing I did here was to add this red t-shirt image to our public folder. So this will be the image we will use in our product page. So what we will do is first see how to read the data from a client component and then how to read it from a server component. So let's get started by adding the client component to our project. So I'm going to open up the SRC app folder and create a new file over here called with client components slash page.js. And let me add some code over here like this. So I added a heading over here and then the product component. And the product component is imported from product.js and we don't yet have that. So let's create that too. I'm going to click new file and product.js like this. And let me paste in some code over here. Okay, so let's go through this. So first of all, I added the use client statement up here because we want to use the client component. And then what I did, I added actually the data as a variable over here. So we can just render the page first and then see how to get the data from a database. And then inside our component, we are rendering the image for the component, then the component name, price, description, uh, and additional information. And all this comes from the data variable we have set over here. So let's save this and our page file also, let's save that. And let's fire up the dev server and see if this works. So I'm gonna open up the terminal, yarn dev. Okay, let's open up the browser and go to the localhost 3000 slash with client components. Okay, so looks like our product component is displayed. So we have the image, uh, name, price, description, and then the additional information. Okay, let's switch back to the VS code. So now we are displaying the data from this variable, but after all, we want to load it from the Postgres database. So since the client component is rendered on the client side, this code over here is run also on the client. So in order to access the database, we need to run the code on the server. And the way to do this is to use route handlers. So in our client component, we want to make a fetch request to this route handler. And then in the route handler, we can query the database directly. So let's see how to do that. So first of all, I'm going to add the route handler. So in the app folder over here, I'm going to create a new file and call it API slash product slash brackets ID slash route.js. So what I want to do here is to have this route handler respond to the address slash API slash product slash the product ID. So if we had more products, we would identify them by the ID in the URL. So over here we have the route.js and the way to make this uh, route handler respond to the get requests because we want to make a get request to get the data. Uh, all we have to do is export a function called get. So let's add that like this. And now before we connect to the database, let's actually go back to the product page and copy this data variable from here. And I'm going to remove it from here also at the same time. And then let's paste it in inside our route handler and then just return that as JSON like this. I'm going to save it and switch to the product page. And now in order for us to make the fetch request to the API route, let's add that code. So first of all, I'm going to need use state and use effect from react like this. And then inside the component, let me paste in some code and then explain it like this. So what I pasted in here was this section over here. So what we do here first is to save the data to state. And then we also have a loading indicator for it in the state. 
and then inside the use effect so whenever this component is uh, mounted we will make a fetch request to that api slash product slash id endpoint and then set the response data to the state and set the loading as false and the id comes from the props so if we check the page.js we pass the id over here as a prop so that comes from there and then we just display some information depending on if we are loading or if there is no data okay good now let's save this and see if it works so i'm going to switch back to the browser and refresh the page and we briefly see loading product over there and then the product information is displayed as you can see and if we open up the dev tools we should also see the fetch request to that endpoint over here as you can see the component is making fetch request to the slash api slash product slash one route and we are getting the product information as a response okay looks like everything is good so now we have the component ready to display the data and then we have the api route ready for returning the data so only thing left to do is actually put this data to a database and then uh, Cure that database from the route handler and then return that data for the component. So let's do that next. Let's start by setting up the database. So I'm gonna go to Vercel and this is my dashboard over there. And in here, I want to go to the storage tab and then click the Postgres database and create. Let's accept. And now let's give our database a name like this and select the region and click create. Good, now our database is created. So the next step is to create the products table where we want to store our product data. So I'm gonna do that by clicking the data tab on the left-hand side and going to the query window. So over here, we can type in any SQL queries we want to run against our database. And what I want to do now is to create the products table. So let's do that. So create table products with ID, name, price, description, additional info, and image fields. So let's run this. Great. So now our table is created and we can check it out by going to the browse tab and selecting the products table from the dropdown. And we can see there is no rows yet. So let's add the one product row we currently have to our database. So I'm gonna switch back to the cure window and let's add the product. So I'm gonna insert to products uh, a red t-shirt with the values for that product so let's run this query okay and let's check it out so in the browse tab let's go to the products and we can see we have the t-shirt with name price description additional info and image fields over here so now we have a database we have a products table in it and we have one row in that database with the red t-shirt product with id one Okay, so now only thing we have to do is to get this data from the database inside our route handler. So let's switch back to the VS Code and I'm gonna open up the uh, route handler we had over here and I'm gonna remove this data from here and actually this response JSON. And the way we can cure the database from our route handler is by using virtual Postgres NPM package. So let me just import that over here like this. So we want to import SQL variable from the virtual Postgres. And then inside our route handler, we can use this SQL to query the database like this. So over here, we are getting the product information from the database by just adding SQL and then the template string thing and select star from products where ID is the product ID. So in this case, it was the one. And then if we got some rows, we want to return the first row because we want just one product. And if we got none, no rows, we will just return null. And as I mentioned, this is uh, safe to use like this. So there is no risk for SQL injection in this syntax because this template string thing with the SQL is uh, escaping everything. So it's safe to use it like this. Okay, so next step is to actually, one more thing we will need to do is install this virtual Postgres as a dependency. We didn't do that yet, so let me do that. So just yarn add virtual Postgres like this. 
So if we start the dev server and switch to the browser and the localhost 3000, let's refresh the page. We are getting the loading product and it looks like we are getting an error. So let's check it out. It's an internal server error. So let's open up VS code. And from this error, we can see that we are missing a connection string. So what we did so far was to just import the virtual Postgres package and then add the query for the database. But right now our application has no idea uh, which Postgres database to actually query. So we need to add a connection string for this. So our application knows uh, where our Postgres database is. And adding the connection string is pretty easy with the virtual Postgres. So let's switch back to the virtual. And in our database dashboard, I'm gonna open up the .env.local tab. So over here we have environment variables that tell our application where the uh, database is and what the password is and so on, everything it needs. So what I'm gonna do is just click here, copy snippet and switch back to the VS code. And now to our uh, root folder, I'm gonna create a new file called .env.local. So this is a way we can add uh, environment variables to our application. And over here, I'm just gonna paste in what I copied. So all the connection strings and click save. Let's close that. And now let's open up our browser again and refresh the page. Okay, good. Looks like our product page is now working. So it's fetching the data from the Postgres database in Vercel through the route handler. And we can inspect the fetch request in here also. We can see we get the data from the uh, route handler correctly. So that's how you read data from a database using client components. And next, let's see how to read the data from the database with server components, because it's a bit different than using the client components. So what I'm gonna do is switch back to the VS code, and I'm gonna take this with client components folder that we just worked on. I'm gonna copy it and paste it in over here and then rename it to with server components like this. And then in our page.js, we don't need to do any changes. And let's open up the product.js. And over here, since this will be now a server component, we will remove the use client and the use effect and use states. And also all these rows over here. So we are gonna clean this up a bit and the JSX can be the same because we are just modifying the way we fetch the data and not how we display it. So with client components, we had to make a fetch request to the route handler because we needed to run the code on the server in order to query the database. And with server components, since they are run on the server, we can actually do that query right inside our components and we don't need to uh, make any fetch requests to any endpoints. So what we can do with server components is basically just add the SQL query in our component. So let's add get product function on the top of the file like this. So it's a synchronous function. And now inside that function, we can use the same SQL query we used in the route handler. So over here, it's basically the same code. Uh, and query the database from there and then just return the response from this function. And let's add actually the SQL import over here also like this. So now we have the get product function that will query the database. And again, this is run on the server. So that's why we can do it like this. And then inside our component, we will get the data by calling that get product function like this. And since it's a synchronous function, we need to add a sync over here like this. So now what we are doing here is getting the data with the get product function and the function is defined over here. And this code is run on the server so we can query the database right inside over here and that returns the product. And we have the data then over here and rest of the component is the same as with client component. So the JSX part. So now let's save this and see if it works. So I'm gonna switch back to the browser and go to the with server components URL. And looks like our component is displayed correctly. So if I refresh the page, 
it shows the correct data and it's now loading it from the database using server components. And if we check the network requests over here, if we refresh the page, we can see that we are not making any fetch requests to the endpoint or any API because the data is fetched on the server when the component is rendered. So there is no need for any fetch requests from the client to the server. So reading data from a database is just the first part of the puzzle because whenever we need to read data from a database, chances are we need to also uh, save some data for a database. And now that you know how to read the data, the next step you should take is to actually learn how to also save data to the database. So to learn how to do that from client and server components, watch this video over here next.